Hello guys, today we are covering 8.1. Okay, we're starting our new unit and this is perimeter and area of plane figures, which means the figure by itself, okay? So let's start off. The perimeter is the sum of the sides or side measures around a 2D figure, two-dimensional figure. I'm gonna write 2D so we don't have to write all that work. Okay, so now let's work an example, okay? We're gonna look at number three. Okay, remember, it's, you're just adding up all the sides. The tick marks, remember, mean that that side is the same. So if this side is 25, then this side is 25, okay? So we get to use calculators again, but that means you have to write it before you type it. So to figure out the perimeter, okay, we add all sides, okay? We always write formula, First, we always write the formula first. This is what kind of the formula is for perimeter. Now we plug in our information. So I'm going to have 10.5 plus, there's 225. So I can write this as 2 times 25, or I could write 25 plus 25 plus 28. Okay. Now in the calculator, because of order of operations, I'm sorry, could the commutative property, I can do this multiplication and this addition at the same time. Oops, that's not gonna work. Let's come over here. Okay, so now, let me clear this stuff out of the way. We've got two times 25, that's gonna obviously be 50, plus then we have 28 plus the 10.5, which is going to be, 38.5, and then we add those two together and we get the perimeter is plus 50, 88.5. Now we can't forget the units, meters. Okay, and perimeter is just units. It's not units squared, it's just units. Okay, moving right along. Let's talk about area. Area is the amount of space occupied or inside by a 2D, two-dimensional figure. Most of the time when you think about area, you think of inside. Now, for this, you want to remember that it is units squared, okay? And the reason for that is because we do a lot of multiplication. All right, so let's write down the area of a square formula. A equals S, squared because the sides are the same. Notice all the tick marks, so therefore all the sides are the same. Area of a rectangle is length times width or base times height. You can think about it either way. The area of a parallelogram, this way you only have to remember one, you can continue to use base times height. <clears throat> And let's look at number eight. What we have to remember when we're talking about base times height is the base and the height are always formed by a right angle, okay? The base and height always form a right angle, 
Okay, so that's kind of things that can help you when you're having to label which one is which. So therefore, here is my B, here is my height, or you can make them interchangeable. Okay, so to find the area of this parallelogram, we write our formula first, which is base times height. So then I plug in my numbers. So I'm gonna have 12 times 10.8. And this is very important that you understand you are writing your work to look like this. I don't want to see 12 times 10.8 as part of your work. You write it like this, follow these steps, and then you punch it into the calculator. 12 times 10.8. Make sure you type it in correctly, because if you don't, you're making an error and it will calculate it wrong. So our answer here is area equals 129.8. Six. Now we're doing feet times feet because we did feet times feet. This is feet squared as our answer. You have to write the correct squared on there. Okay. Next, we're talking about the area of a triangle. That formula can be written in several ways. You can write it as one half base times height, or I like to work it as base times height divided by two. It's completely your choice. You just write the correct formula first. Okay, next problem. We're gonna turn the page and we're gonna go to number 13. Hmm. Okay, I picked 13 because if you notice, it's not a triangle that looks very similar. Our perpendicular sign or our right angle has to be outside. So therefore, this symbolizes that this is my base and this is my height or vice versa. I would actually say it's the way it is, but it is interchangeable. Okay, so first things first, we write our formula which is A equals base times height divided by two. Second, we plug in our information. So we have 5.8 times 2.9, all divided by two. Now I'm going to do the multiplication on the top first, times 2.9, enter. So that gives me 16.82 divided by two. And that equals 8.41. Oh, I didn't leave space for the unit. 8.41 kilometers squared. That is what my area equals. Now, Real quick, you can also work this as one half is the same as 0.5, correct? So I can do 0 0.5 times 5.8 times 2.9. And when I do that, mm -hmm. 2.9 times 2.9, and we get 8.41, just so you can see that there is more than one way to work this problem. Okay, next, we're gonna look at the trapezoid. The formula for the trapezoid, and these are all on your formula sheet that you get to use, you don't have to memorize, memorize these, is one half height times B1 plus B2, or I like to use height times B1 plus B2, all divided by two. It's up to you, it's entirely up to you. Okay, let's look at number 17. The reason that I choose 17 is because the height is not necessarily there by a dotted line. You have to make sure that you use the correct number for the height. The height is always the distance between the two parallel sides. Height is distance between, BTW, I know it means something by the way, but it means between for here. 
distance between two bases, which are the parallel sides. So here is my height, which means here is B1, here is B2. Now the bases could be interchangeable. This could be one and this could be two. That's not a problem. Okay, here we go. So now we write our formula. B1 plus B2 times the height all divided by two. I'll also write it that way. So we have six plus 13 times 10 all over two. Now, what I can see right here is I can do multiple things at one step. I can do the six plus 13, but I can also do 10 divided by two, which is five, which then that's gonna give me 19 times five, which equals 95 feet squared. Okay, last problem for this video. There's two parts, two videos for this. One where it's just the shapes, a little bit of word problems, and then the other one is mainly word problems. All right, here we go. So we're gonna look at number 22. This is going backwards. This means we're not solving for the area, we're solving for one of the dimensions, okay? Solve for dimension, okay? So we wanna find the length of the second base of a trapezoid, okay? With one base measuring eight inches, a height of 13, and an area of 149.5. Okay, so first thing I gotta do is write my formula. A equals B1. I might use a different formula for this one. I'm going to use 0.5 height times B1 plus B2, just because it might lend itself a little bit easier. Okay, so I have, you can use whichever one you want. 149.5 equals 0.5. So now I'm plugging in the information, okay? Plug in info. So I know that my height is 13. I know that B1 is eight plus B sub two. I don't know what B sub two is. So therefore that's what I'm solving for. Okay. My next step is I'm going to simplify what I can. Multiply the 0. 0.5 times 13 which gives me 6.5 times eight plus, which is gonna use the B just to make it easier, equals 149.5. Now we're just solving. So I have to distribute the 6.5 to everything inside, okay? So that's gonna give me 6.5 times eight, which is, 52 plus 6.5b equals 149.5. There is another way we can work it at that point, but we'll leave it alone for right now. So now I'm solving. So I subtract 52 from both sides. So I now end up with 149.5 minus 52, which gives me 97.5 equals 6.5b. And we divide by 6.5 to both sides. And I end up with b equals 15. This is all in inches, so I have to have my units. My B2 is 15 inches. Okay, 
If you want to know the other way to work this one, just come see me and I'll show you. Otherwise, this is the first video. I will see you in the next video. Bye.